we're about 30 seconds away from the start of the uh, announcement cool. ceremony. And if she gets nominated, we'll see if... We'll see the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the official the pronunciation. <laughs> pronunciation. In fact, let's take you live of that, that shot right there. Your uh, Michelle Turner standing by for us, and we're going to sit here and, and watch as they're getting ready to announce. It'll be interesting to see Seth MacFarlane, uh, before he actually hosts the show itself, be part of the announcement. Here it is. Good morning. Uh, I'm Seth MacFarlane, the host of the Oscars. Uh, if you don't know who I am, just pretend I'm Donny Osmond. You'll be fine. We'll get through this. Uh, it's a great honor to be here to announce the nominees. I'm not sure why uh, we don't wait till noon to do this, since the only people who are up right now are either flying or having surgery. Um, but I want to congratulate today's nominees and also to congratulate those who weren't nominated. You can stop doing interviews where you pretend that you had such a great time making the movie. And here to help me out, since there's nothing creepier than a guy standing by himself in Hollywood at five in the morning, is the lovely and talented Miss Emma Stone. Thank you, Seth. Emma Stone is the star of the new film Gangster Squad. That's, I'm not sure you're the star. That seems more like an ensemble piece to me, right? Just keep reading. The star of the new film Gangster Squad and is one of the brightest talents of her generation. Some say she's better than Meryl Streep. Who? Who, say, who says that? I don't know. Nobody. A lot of people. <laughs> Let's just read the nominees. Okay. Okay. The nominees will be read in no particular order. For best performance by an actor in a supporting role, the nominees are Christoph Waltz in Django Unchained. He's won before. Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Master. He has won before. Robert De Niro in Silver Linings Playbook. He's won before. Alan Arkin in Argo. He has won before. And Tommy Lee Jones in Lincoln. He's won before. Breath of fresh air in that category. For best original song, the nominees are before My Time from Chasing Ice, music and lyric by Jay Ralph. Pie's Lullaby from Life of Pie, music by Michael Dana, lyric by Bombay Jayashri. Suddenly from Les Miserables, music by Claude Michel Schoenberg, lyric by Herbert Kretzmer and Alain Bublil. Everybody Needs a Best Friend from Ted, music by Walter Murphy, <laughs> lyric by Seth MacFarlane. And Skyfall from Skyfall. Music and lyric by Adele Adkins and Paul Epworth. Uh, that's kind of cool. I got nominated. Yeah, I like that. that. Is I, cool. I, I, get, I get to go to the Oscars. Yeah. Now. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the MTV Awards once gave Michael Jackson a Lifetime Achievement Award just so he'd show up. So I'm not saying that's what's happening today, but okay. I kind of am. I kind okay. of am. All right, all right. The 2012 nominees for Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role are Sally Field in Lincoln, Anne Hathaway in Les Miserables, Jackie Weaver in Silver Linings Playbook, Helen Hunt in The Sessions, and Amy Adams in The Master. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> feature film. The nominees are Frankenweenie, Tim Burton, The Pirates, Band of Misfits, Peter Lord, Wreck-It Ralph, Rich Moore, Paranorman, Sam Fell and Chris Butler, and Brave, Mark Andrews and Brenda Chapman. For best foreign language film, the nominees are From Austria, Amour. From Chile, No. From Canada, War Witch. From Denmark, A Royal Affair. And from Norway, Kontiki. Um, I, read, I read Amour was co-produced uh, in Austria and Germany, right? Mm. The last time Austria and Germany got together and co-produced something, it was Hitler, but this is much better. <laughs> much better. Highly, much better. Highly recommended. So much highly better. Yeah. yeah. For adapted screenplay, we have... Lucy Alibar and Ben Zeitlin for Beasts of the Southern Wild. 
Chris Terrio for Argo. Tony Kushner for Lincoln. David O. Russell for Silver Linings Playbook. And David McGee for Life of Pi. These are adapted screenplays, keep in mind. So that means the writers just basically copied stuff from Microsoft Word <laughs> and, and pasted it into Final Draft. So that's... <laughs> for Best Original Screenplay, the nominees are John Gatons for Flight, Mark Bowl for Zero Dark Thirty, Quentin Tarantino for Django Unchained, Michael Haneke for Amour, and Wes Anderson and Roman Coppola for Moonrise Kingdom. For Best Achievement in Directing, the nominees are David O. Russell for Silver Linings Playbook, <laughs> Ang Lee for Life of Pi, Steven Spielberg for Lincoln, Michael Haneke for Amour, and Ben Zeitlin for Beasts of the Southern Wild. These are five people who are the very best at sitting in a chair watching other people make a movie. The nominees for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role are Daniel Day-Lewis in Lincoln, Denzel Washington in Flight, Hugh Jackman in Les Miserables, Bradley Cooper in Silver Linings Playbook, and Joaquin Phoenix in The Master. This is just a, a little fun fact for you. Uh, Denzel's character was actually as drunk as half of the people who are up at this hour. Ah, yes. <laughs> Guilty. For, uh, <laughs> for best performance by an actress in a leading role, the nominees are Naomi Watts in The Impossible, Jessica Chastain in Zero Dark Thirty, Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook, Emmanuel Riva in Amour, and Quavenzene Wallace in The Beasts of the Southern Wild. At 85, Emmanuel Riva is the oldest Best Actress nominee in Oscar history. Quavenzene Wallace is the youngest Best Actress nominee ever. She's nine. And finally, we are pleased to announce that the film selected as the Best Picture nominees for 2012 are Beasts of the Southern Wild, Dan Janvey, Josh Penn, and Michael Gottwald, producers. Silver Linings Playbook. Donna Gelati, Bruce Cohen, and Jonathan Gordon, producers. Zero Dark Thirty, Mark Bull, Catherine Bigelow, and Megan Ellison, producers. Lincoln, Steven Spielberg, and Kathleen Kennedy, producers. Les Miserables, Tim Bevan, Eric Fellner, Deborah Hayward, and Cameron McIntosh, producers. Life of Pi, Gil Netter, Ang Lee, and David Womark, producers. Amour, nominees to be determined. Django Unchained, Stacey Scher, Reginald Hudlin, and Pilar Savone, producers. And Argo, Grant Heslov, Ben Affleck, and George Clooney, producers. Argo has been nominated. Somebody tell Cranston he can unclench his teeth now. <laughs> Brian, I love you. Please join us at the Oscars Sunday, February 24th, to find out who will take home the Oscars. Congratulations to all the nominees. And there you have it. Lots of surprises, I think. Some big snubs and also a really good nomination sort of moment between Emma Stone and Second Farley. They were very really funny. Good. That was the refreshing. Best yeah, no podium. No, just standing there with the, the names of the films going up behind them. I thought that was terrific. Right, why don't it really you start? establishes the tone for the Oscars. I think people are really going to be excited about it because it's usually so stiff and straightforward. Oh, it, uh, this really is going to be a very different Oscars. And he clearly is going to be a lot of fun. You could tell already. So what do you think? I mean, obviously, if you look at the director, best oh director, wow. Weird. Best no Ben Affleck and no Catherine Bigelow. I totally now change all of my predictions I had coming in because I thought this is a three picture race between Argo, Kurt Law, I mean um, Zero Dark Thirty and Lincoln. With no director nominated, your chance really is incredibly oh, very, yeah. minimal. minimal of yeah. winning Tom, the Tom best Hooper picture. And no Tom Hooper for Tom Les Mis. Tom Hooper for Les Mis, which I looked at that movie and thought this had to be tough to shoot. These close-up decisions, they sang on the set rather than dub it later. And, and, and just single shots, too. There was a lot of decisions made. I'm not a director, but you know how, how tough it is to put it together. and. Lots of nods also, for Beast of the Southern Wild, yes. including the best director. Uh, yeah. Nod. I also want to say that Alan Arkin 
is doing a film now and he's renting one of my homes and I'm going to give him a 10% discount. <laughs> So and another really interesting nomination was Joaquin for Best Actor for The Master yeah. because he basically had dissed the Academy. He said the, the award season for Walk the Line when he was nominated there was the most uncomfortable time of his life. He never wants to go back there. The there Oscar is like a carrot. Outside. It's like the most disgusting, distasteful yeah. carrot he could imagine. And they still gave him just the nomination. That, that There's something matter. about the Academy. They like the people who don't like them. They, they, they gave Marlon Brando an Oscar when he refused to show up. And, you know, well, I'm going to accept for Joaquin. Kane, if you will. Oh, good. <laughs> and I'm going to rush up. We get, do have the, the correct Oscar. pronouncer for right. the youngest Covenzier. So no je. <laughs> right. But, but this does make her, you as was pointed out, it, AJ. I, I, I let Sola that. <laughs> and I just mumble Quvenz over it. But you know, I, I'm telling you, with you see the number of nods that that movie has gotten, I think that a she has a really mm -hmm. tremendous Maybe opportunity here. Maybe she'll be a dark horse. Mm -hmm. And of course, so, as Emma Stone pointed out, right, oldest and young. youngest, right. so making history on that front. What, it, looking at best actor, best actress categories, any big surprises there? Uh, uh, Miss Wallace. I'm just going to call her Miss Wallace from now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only I don't think other snub in Best Actor was John Hawks for the sessions. Right. You, yeah, you talked about that. I thought he was. He wonderful. was never really a shoe in, but Joaquin got that spot. But the yeah. rest of it was just down line. It's Bradley Cooper's first Best Actor nomination right. in, uh, for the Oscars. Helen Hunt was wonderful in the sessions. That's uh, that's a that she'll be tough to beat if they really look. At the film, that that was. A, I think it's going to come down to Jessica film. Chastain and Jennifer Wall, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer yeah, Lawrence, who, who is the odds-on favorite at this point, even before those nominees were announced. Right, 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 right. Well, let's bring in Nichelle Turner um, mm -hmm. and also Scott Feinberg. They're both with us. <laughs> uh, Scott's with the Hollywood Reporter, of course. So, uh, Nichelle, uh, how did you do? I yes. know you. <laughs> how does your list match up to what was announced? You know, the good thing about the Oscars and the Academy, we always know they're going to zig when everyone else <laughs> zags at some point. And we saw that this morning. I was pleasantly surprised to see Kufin Zene Wallace get a nomination. I thought that could happen. I, I figured Hugh Jackman would probably get a nomination. He was kind of made to play Jean Valjean, you know. And um, But I was surprised about John Hawks not getting a nomination for the session, of course. And then in the director category, no, Scott. Crazy. I mean, that's mouth open. No Catherine Bigelow, no Ben Affleck, and no Quentin Tarantino. Know we could have seen. Yeah, and not to take any issue with the, the people who replaced them, but that was pretty shocking because Argo and Zero Dark Thirty have, along with Lincoln, been perceived as the front runner for quite a while. So for their directors not to get in almost uh, disqualifies their best picture prospects uh, in terms of winning. Um, you, you don't win without a best director nomination. So the new landscape, it would appear to be Lincoln with 12 nominations, including all the big ones, and Silver Linings Playbook, yes. which made some history. This is the first movie in 31 years to get an acting nomination in all four acting categories, and the and only 14 have ever done it. We're talking about Shrikar Named Desire, Sunset Boulevard, real classics, so that is a tremendous yeah. deal. And just to, to get everyone caught up, if they missed it, Silver Linings Playbook was nominated for Best Picture, nominated for Best Director, Best Lead Actor, Bradley Cooper, Best Best Lead Actress, Jennifer Lawrence, Best Supporting Actor, Robert De Niro, and Best Supporting Actress, Jackie Weaver. It was one of those movies that you heard a lot about, and when you saw it, you thought, yeah, it's just that good. And you know what else is in co that that has in common with, uh, you know, Lincoln, is that you leave them both, I think, you know, obviously Lincoln, we, we knew how that was going to end. It's Absolutely. not a happy ending, but you're, in, you're sort of inspired. With Silver Linings Playbook, it's a upbeat ending. Um, Zero Dark Thirty is, is not necessarily that. Right. And, um, and Argo, you know, people do cheer towards the end. I'm, I'm not quite sure really what happened there. That is bizarre. <laughs> I was gripping the seat at the end of that I, still, I, I, and I knew and what was going to happen. And people applaud. And all <laughs> exactly. That, so. so Soledad Lincoln leads the nominations this morning with 12 nominations, although, like Scott was mentioning, Silver Linings Playbook seems to be the darling of the Academy this year. All right, those folks who said Lincoln was a shoe in they were completely right, and those who thought Argo was going to be <laughs> yeah. a shoe in Imagine the vibe in the Affleck household this morning. Uh. I have a feeling it's such a huge surprise there, but what we do now know, eight out of a potential ten pictures have been nominated for Best Picture. And looking at my list, I put them in order of how I thought they would mm -hmm. fall in. The top eight were the ones that were nominated. Mm -hmm. Moonrise Kingdom and Amour were the ones that I thought maybe could sneak in, but they didn't. We also have senior editor from Vanity Fair, Krista Smith, with us this morning. <laughs> so Best Director... Really, I think this is going to be That's looked shocker, at, Krista, honestly. as a snub for not only Ben Affleck for Argo, but also Catherine it's, Bigelow. It's a total shocker. I am shocked that Ben Affleck did not get Best Director. I'm shocked that Catherine Bigelow did not get it. And I think 
Uh, I, I just really don't know how that happened. Uh, it's kind of amazing to see a little Sundance movie uh, that I saw in January a year ago go all the way with Beasts of the Southern Wild. I'm surprised that that got uh, Best Director. Um, I'm thrilled for the young actress. That's a great story, obviously, with the young and the old there. That's what we love the Academy for. Uh, but yeah, that's shocking. And the other big, big surprise uh, is Silver Linings Playbook.